The number of Trump administration officials denying an anonymous editorial in the New York Times is growing. These denials are only increasing the speculation over who wrote the tell-all article. It's also drawing more disdain from the president and even Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky, who says the president should investigate with a lie detector test to find the unhappy senior official. For more, we're going to go tonight to our political panel, civil rights attorney Robert Patello and Carrie Sheffield, national editor of Accuracy in the Media. Thanks for joining us both tonight. Thanks, Thanks Scott. Great me. to be here. Well, let me start off with you, Carrie. We are in day two of this great anonymous op-ed story, and now we are in the denial phase. Reportedly, White House staffers are printing off their denials and putting it in front of the president in writing. But I have to ask you a question. Can President, really, president Trump really trust these pieces of paper when supposedly someone went to the New York Times with their complaints instead of actually going directly to him? Well, and Scotty, the big mystery here is that we don't actually know the level of the person. So the New York Times says it was a senior administration official. We don't know what that means. It could be some anonymous bureaucrat who is, you know, seven degrees away from the president. We really don't know. And so that's the recklessness of the New York Times in this situation. Uh, somebody pointed out, actually, that if the New York Times was going to be responsible on the reporting side, it would be their job to dig in to find out who on the editorial side uh, is, is being covered up here, uh, if they're going to be a good journalist. I just think this whole situation it shows an extreme level of bias that everyone knows who looks at the media overall, uh, Harvard University showed that 91% of media coverage of this president is negative. And so by using this reckless anonymous sourcing, uh, the RNC said it well, uh, this author, if you're this disgruntled, you need to resign. Don't behave like a petulant child and do these anonymous tacks like a child. But Robert, the author of this wonderful article, anonymous article, said that he was wanting to bring comfort to the American people. Do you really think there is comfort right now, not only with the American people, but more importantly within that White House, as staffers are going to become under more scrutiny, even for a, a paranoid White House that was already afraid of leaks and dealing with situations where people were going outside and telling what was going on on the inside? Well, I don't think this brought comfort to anybody. It basically turned the White House into Hunger Games, where you have one person fighting against the other uh, to find out who is the leaker, who is the person who is uh, bringing information between this and Omarosa, recording people for two years, uh, and all the other information coming out of the White House. I don't think this brings comfort to anybody. What the White House has to do is turn around, refocus, key in on the economic numbers that are coming out, which are good for the White House, key in on issues like criminal justice reform. They have broad bipartisan support that they have ignored. The, the president had to stop tweeting about various uh, uh, the deep state conspiracies and who uh, and uh, the biased media and all those things. Concentrate on the things the American people care about because we have an election in two months that's going to really decide what happens to this president going forward. If Democrats win uh, win in November, then we can we'll have congressional hearings, we'll have impeachment hearings. That will be the dominating force going into 2020. So if you want to do something, get the uh, get the ball rolling on things like criminal justice. Reform, Reform, uh, transportation, infrastructure, and ensuring that we focus on economic numbers. Focusing but, on these crazy inside Washington stories <laughs> don't do anything. But to Robert's point, well, Carrie, wouldn't the president want to focus on those sorts of things? And yet we continuously see this drama happen in, in different versions of it, but it's the same ultimate story that distracts from what he wants to push. Yeah, no, and it's really sad, and, and, and honestly, this is why Trump supporters keep backing their man, is because there is this level of bias, because the media doesn't want to talk about substance. Today, for example, the Wall Street Journal is one of the shining bright examples of doing real journalism, and they were reporting on the lowest uh, unemployment numbers uh, in terms of people applying for unemployment in 49 years. That's phenomenal. That is truly, truly remarkable. Uh, you know, record unemployment for African Americans, for Latinos. Uh, women are so strong right now in the employment sector. That's all substance, but you don't see that. You, you, people focus uh, in the media. They've, they've, they've basically playing the role of judge, jury, and executioner. They rush and ignore due process. And I think it's going to come to hit them in the ballot box, honestly. I think that uh, progressives are going to take a hit. I think the Senate, uh, there are 10 states that Donald Trump won uh, that are now currently held by Democrats, including, I believe, five states where he won by double digits. Uh, so there's a lot of room to be made here, uh, an argument to be made. Uh, the Democrats, uh, they're overplaying their hand very strongly. But is it not also President Trump not helping the situation by continuing to tweet? I mean, he's continuing to tweet about it today, Robert. Does he not kind of get in his own way sometimes? 
President Trump has always been his own worst enemy on these things because he can't take a personal slight and slide it under the under the mat and just concentrate on the macro issues. He has tens of millions of Twitter followers, so when you're talking about these uh, conspiracy theories and these inside Washington uh, uh, machinations, that's not doing anything. You know, you have a woman in Georgia, uh, Annie Doris Spell, who was sentenced to 21 years in prison at 62 years of age for a nonviolent uh, first-time offense. Concentrate on criminal justice reform going into the November elections. Concentrate on what you can do to affect real people in America, because the longer that you concentrate on these crazy stories coming out of your administration, it feeds the narrative that the media wants to eat. Absolutely. Well, Robert Carey, thank you for joining us tonight. Once again, a delightful conversation uh, that I can guess will continue as the president's tweets seem to always take the headlines. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.